it's a really good time to take I think advantage. I might ask, ask a question. Um, I do custom sewing, like just sew dresses and skirts mm -hmm. as a hobby, and now I'm getting like all my friends and relatives as my clients now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm kind of booked for the next summer. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, I'm actually thinking about putting that into a business and starting from home. Mm -hmm. Since you did work working at your own garage, how did you go about revamping that into an actual business? And what? Pardon? How you, how, how, since you started woodworking as mm -hmm. a garage business, mm -hmm. how did you put that into a business and actually get into a real business. <laughs> I started it as a real business. I just started it in my garage. But like I, I mentioned, I wrote a business plan. I had clients. I, I, I got all my reseller's number and my federal ID number and everything that I needed, even though I didn't have employees and I didn't really need it. And here again, this is one of the things, one of the few things that I did right was I planned to be too busy to come back later and do those things. So lay your foundation. Learn your accounting software. Learn how to write invoices. Learn how to do payables. Uh, learn all that there is to about managing your business. Uh, learn how to manage your accounts, your, your, your sales accounts, your customers. Learn, uh, know how you are going to grow. What, what are you going to do when you can't physically do all the sewing and run the business? How are you going to bring in additional help? Who are you going to hire? Where are you going to put them? So uh, your business plan actually should lay out your, your, your growth strategy. So it's more than just you know one person sitting at a sewing machine, unless that's all you want, which is fine. But you've got to make it work out. Here's the other <laughs> key component that I like to stress, and I always, even through my 10-week class, I stress it at every meeting, at every class, because it's so important. What do you want out of your business? And if you can't define that, how the heck are you going to know when you're successful? Because success is getting what you want out of your business. And you need to define it. Not only know what it is, but you need to write it down. Write it down. And there's a nice exercise, and this is, again, one of the things that I did right, and I actually had my handwritten notes. And this is a fun exercise. Dream. Dream about your future. Think about all the nice things that you want to have in life, whatever it is. What's your, your life? If you could write your life, what would it be like? Write it. It doesn't matter what it is. Write your life. Now, you're going to spend years developing a business, is it going to get you there? And if it's not, is that really what you want to do? So for you, thinking about what, what do you want out of the business, if, if you have uh, modest financial goals and you want to have time for friends and family and do things, you've got to see if that's all going to come together. I had one student in Wapaka two years ago, and he's speaking to my class on Wednesday. And he came into the class, and he exemplifies that type of thinking. And I, I am so glad that he could come back and speak to our class, because he came into the class, he wanted, he wanted to start a carpet cleaning business. I don't know, carpet cleaning business? Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> I didn't know anything about carpet cleaning business, but as the class progressed and we got into the business plan, and I remember I was using his business as a model to show break-even point, and he started putting numbers, and I'm starting to do the math, and all of a sudden my eyes are getting big, and I go, okay, I did it. <laughs> and, I, and I understood, but he knew exactly what he wanted. He wanted X amount of dollars income, and it wasn't just I want to be well off. Put a number down. What is it? Put it down. If it's $50,000 a year, if it's $70,000, if it's $200,000, put it down. He knew what he wanted. Most importantly, he wanted time. He did not want his business to consume him. And he wanted time to spend with his two young boys who were in baseball, and he loved to coach Little League, and his family and his wife. That's what he wanted, quality of life, and he wanted a reasonable income. And he built his business to achieve that. And he did it. 
And that's what he's doing. He, and I tried to get him to speak to our class last summer. He couldn't because he was coaching Good for you. you know, he's got his priorities, so he knows what he's doing. So if you can't define what it is you want, how the heck are you ever going to know when you get it? Was that a, was that a long answer to a very short question? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's a DTM, don't time me. <laughs> For so, Sean, for Sean, like if she starts a business in her house, does she have to get like certain permits or are there regulations for starting businesses in her house? Sometimes it depends. Mm -hmm. I would talk to someone in the zoning, and the way to ask them is is ask them is there anything that would prevent me from starting my business in my house? Don't ask them if it's okay. Just say. What is there? And, and then they will say, well, there's this ordinance that says this and this. Usually, if, it's, if you're in the city limits, there are some ordinances dealing with signage. You, you can only have so big a sign. There's ordinances dealing with truck traffic. If you have big, but you probably wouldn't have truck traffic anyway. Uh, there can be ordinances regarding customer cars. They might only allow one or two cars in the front of your building at any given time. So those are some of the things. But it's definitely worth checking out, go down to zoning and ask them you know, what regulations. Plus, in some communities there are covenants, and I don't know if there would be a covenant in your area. And a covenant, again, is an agreement by the people living in that community to abide by certain regulations. And there might be a covenant that says no home-based businesses. So those are just a couple things that you might want to check out before you jump in. Um, if I finish spreading my business plan, I want to make this into a real business. Um, what I still need to get, say, I, I want to use my own money to start this. Would, would I still need to get loans from the bank just to start something? Unless you need them. I like bootstrapping. I boots, that's called bootstrapping, where you, you fund your own, your own business. And lots of people have done that. Uh, a business like your, you have the sewing machines already, I take it. So you don't really have any big capital expense to get started, right? <laughs> you don't have to borrow money. If you can do it without it, you're so much better ahead. Absolutely. And there are there are some effective ways to bootstrap, and, and I use just about everything that you can imagine to get my business going. What are so, some of those? Uh, I used to I used to get terms extended terms from my uh, suppliers. I had a hard time coming up with cash. I had a big job. I needed three thousand dollars worth of material. And my first main supplier I called says, can you give me 90 days on this? It's going to take me 90 days to turn the project. You know, uh, 30 days to get the materials, 30 days to build it and sell it or to give it, and then another 30 days on the receivable. And the first uh, supplier said, no, nope, can't do it. So I called my second supplier. I said this, you know, and I told him the same story. He said, oh, yeah, sure, we can work with you. And I had my business for 18 years, and guess who was my main supplier for 18 years? I never forgot that. So they will work with you. You talk to them, you ask them, and so that's one way to do it. I used to trade a lot of things when I first started. Somebody had something uh, that I needed, and they needed something from me, so I would make something for them for this. You know, So I did a lot of trading and a lot of swapping. So there are all kinds of ways that you can build your business without really getting, having to borrow money. So. That's funny because um, I would sell a lot of skirts and um, tank tops for my sister-in-law and um, in, in compensating me for that, she bought me the um, sewing mannequin. Oh. So that really helped me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah, excellent. Uh, those are really good ways to, to launch a business on a shoestring. You don't have to go to a bank. However, I would say this, that you have a bank. Uh, like an attorney, a banker is not someone you want to go shop for when you need one. This is, this is uh, planning ahead. You don't want to find an attorney when you have to go to court. And it's too late. A attorney is, for, is preventive. A, and a good attorney is going to keep you out of court by making sure that you have contracts that are well written, that are protecting you, and well understood so that nobody's going to bother taking you to court because everything is covered, right? So a banker is the same thing. You don't go shop for a banker when you need a banker. Find someone that you feel comfortable with, get to know them, get to tell them exactly what you're doing. I may not need you, and I hope I don't, but if I do, is this something that 